OK, Gareth Southgate has resigned as England manager. And look, I do have some sympathy for Gareth Southgate. Look, he's made back-to-back -back Euros finals, only the third manager in history to do that. So he's part of a very select group. And that's a great achievement. Unfortunately, obviously, he lost both finals. And he's the only manager to lose back-to-back -back Euros finals, which is unfortunate. Um, but I do think Southgate has definitely improved England in, in the result of the culture, the structures, and, and progressing in tournaments further. We, we're starting, we can win penalty shootouts again. That's something we weren't doing in previous generations. He's, he's got us to more finals than the great Alf Ramsey. He only got us to the one. Southgate's got us to two. Um, you know, we're, we're reaching the latter stages in tournaments. The best we played was at Euro 2020, personally, under Southgate. I think that's... And after then, it has been a bit all over the place. The Nations League performances haven't been great. The World Cup performances weren't great. These Euros performances have been really tough to watch, but they were effective until the final. We made the final. And the way we were playing in the group stage and in the early knockout rounds, I was concerned that we would progress. I think Switzerland could have done us. I think, you know... Um, we could, have, we could have easily lost that game against Slovakia. And there are some criticisms of, of Southgate's selections, substitution and the timings and, and tactical changes. And, and, you know, who takes a player who's not fit? This is the second tournament he's done this, where he's taken players not fit. He did it with Henderson. He's done it with Luke Shaw. That means you're carrying a dead weight in the squad that can't be used until they are fit enough to train and play. Uh, but when Shaw did play he, he had a pretty good run when he did play but limited minutes Gordon and Palmer I think the way they were utilised was poor um, I'm, I'm sorry they, they were utilised very badly Gordon Anthony Gordon was really utilised very poorly um, and the experiment with Trent Alexander-Arnold I mean look that should never have happened he should have been the starting right wing back and, uh, and Trippier or Walker should have been the starting left wing back or left back whilst Luke Shaw was unavailable but to only take one out and out left back to me is poor selection again um, not using other squad players during that final group game against Slovenia give other players a run out get them some minutes under their belt I think was a poor decision um, and and it's I, I, look, but I do have some sympathy for him the, 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 the torrent of crap he has faced on social media I think has been overkill but the mainstream media hasn't helped his cause. At the same time, he does leave the FA with a bit of bit of a predicament because they were expecting him to either see out his contract in November and then have negotiations about an extension to the World Cup because they were very keen to keep him. Uh, with all reports coming out of the FA, they were keen to extend him to the next World Cup. What this now does is leave a bit of a conundrum for the FA because the start of the season is, is weeks away in August. It's, it's going to be coming quite, quite quickly and quite soon and they're going to want to have his replacement in place ready for the start of next season, which is in August, which is not a lot of time. Now, Eddie Howe's come out and said he's not interested, straight up. He said, no, he's committed to Newcastle and I can't blame him because the England job is a poison chalice, whoever takes it. Uh, there's not a lot of other English managers available. People would not be happy with Lee Carsley, who already works with the, the youth setup at the FA, or Graham Potter, who's currently out of work, considering obviously what happened at Chelsea with Graham Potter. But then if you look at Graham Potter in Sweden and with Brighton, actually you can see why Graham Potter could be an attractive option. And people go, but he, he why he learned in a foreign league, yeah, he did very well in Sweden. And the Swedish league, ironically, is very competitive. It's just not getting the exposure because of the way... UEFA qualification works for the Champions League, Europa League and Europa Conference League. But he learned his trade overseas. He decided to take a risk. It paid off. He got the job at Brighton. He did very well at Brighton. Chelsea was a disaster because Chelsea is a disaster. Let that sink in. It completely poor ownership structure. So many manager changes. No culture there. But has his Chelsea time damaged his stock? Um, will still... Learned his trade in France. He's young. He's motivated. He speaks multiple languages. Uh, has just signed a new deal with a new club. And they're not going to want to lose him. So he's not available. The options for an England manager who's English are limited. Which then leaves the potential for possibly get another foreign manager in. Klopp is available. Whether he wants to get straight back into management after just leaving Liverpool after eight years would be interesting. 
Pochettino is available. He was let go. He, he left Chelsea at the end of the season. So Pochettino is available. Would he want to jump straight back in to management so soon after? Again, Chelsea being you know a nightmare for him following Potter. Then there are the managers under contract. Guardiola is in the last year of his contract at Man City, which means the buyout clause is actually less than what it would have been had they approached him potentially sooner if they go that route. And Guardiola stated that he would be interested in international management at some point. But then, do, does the FA want to go down the foreign manager route again, considering what happened with Capello? Sven wasn't necessarily a bad manager for England, but the Capello experiment was a disaster. And he quit weeks before Euro 2012, which then led to the Roy Hodgson era, which, while the first tournament wasn't necessarily a complete disaster, he was lit, he was meant to be there as an interim. I think Hodgson in 2012 did okay with the situation that befell England, but then the FA decided to extend him and give him the job full-time. He was never the right guy to be the long-term manager. Now, Southgate comes in after the Sam Allardyce fiasco, and in my opinion, I think Southgate, yes, he's stabilised the ship, he's definitely brought on some young players, the squad is more youthful, and, and there is the, the attacking potential there, the culture is a lot better, there's none of the, the inter-club rivalries within the, the England dressing room, they're all focused on England, whether they get on or not, um, and he has got a pretty good win percentage as England manager, apart from the Nations League. Um, but the style of play wasn't great. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, personally for me, I would love to see Stuart Pearce be given another crack at the job. I think only one game as an interim manager a while ago, I think he, he should have been, in my opinion, given a fair crack at the whip. But they decided to go in a different direction. And again, that's the FA's prerogative, but... Options are limited, and the England job, as Southgate has found, is a poison chalice. Because the social media, I think some of the some of the stuff said on social media in the last 36 hours has been pretty diabolical, to be honest. Um, and some of the mainstream media articles, again, not helping the situation. So any manager coming in is going to have to be fully aware of the fan pressure and the mainstream media pressure. And the FA obviously want a safe pair of hands. Now... Personally, I'd like to see more attacking football. And if we can get the same results while attacking and being more positive and still make semi-finals and finals and potentially win a World Cup or a Euros, I'll be happy with that. What frustrated me was the, the style of play. It wasn't great. Um, and, and that's where I think fans were booming in the Euros. They weren't happy with what was being dished up with the players available. And a lot of it was aimed at Southgate. Now, the players themselves also have to take some responsibility for bang average performances. Harry Kane, I think, may have played his last game for England. Trippier may have played his last game for England. And Walker may have played his last game for England. They really, for me, did not perform great at this year. As senior players, they did not perform. I think Trippier, out of the three of them, performed potentially the best out of the three. Walker, for me, had a poor tournament. Kane had a poor tournament. And I do think there's going to be a New England captain as well. I don't know who's going to be Southgate's successor, but the FA need to get a successor in soon, but make sure they get the right guy. With the right philosophy, with the right style, that can be a bit more positive. If the results... Obviously, Southgate can be judged on results, as I say. If... Whoever comes in can play with a more attacking mindset and still get those same results, making finals, making semi-finals, and getting in, winning penalty shootouts. You know, getting to latter stages of tournaments, but play with more positivity. I think we can go in the right direction. I think the foundations are there, but I do think some of the older senior players. I think their race is run. I think Kane's race is run. Trippier's race is run. Walker's race is run. But there's a good, young, exciting, youthful core to this side. Um, so we'll see what happens. But that's it. Southgate is gone. Um, so social media and sections of the mainstream media get their wish. I feel si I have sympathy for him. He's a, he's a very nice, amenable, friendly human being. Um, and I think the, the, the role has taken its toll on him. Uh, some of his press conferences during the Euros didn't. That, that, that was a man that was, I think, ha close to having enough, basically. But they got some momentum going in the knockout stages. It didn't happen. If, if England had stolen the win on, on, on Sunday, I think he may have still decided to call it a day anyway. 
I think this was going to be his last tournament regardless. I think he dropped hints at the World Cup that if he did stay on, the next tournament would be his last. But now it's up to the FA to find a successor. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts on the situation in the comments section below. And I'll have some more content for you guys very, very soon.